Hello, I'm Rina Dipti Anabil, aka Mommy Imperfect, and you're listening to the Sisterhood of Mommy Imperfect. This is the podcast where each and every week I explore the wonderful world of womanhood, and it's a place where you get your weekly dose of unfiltered girl chat. It's the place where we celebrate those women who are game changers. Now, my guest today is definitely helping women to, uh, well, she's actually definitely helping to elevate the South Asian entertainment scene. She's representing brown women on TV, film and on stage. You might have seen her in loads of things, actually, um, probably recently in Hollyoaks, in which she plays Miss Bamalik. It's Harvey Ridley. Welcome to the Sisterhood of Mommy Imperfect. Hello. Thank you for having me. Well, it's lovely to talk to you. And um, as I said before, I am I was hoping to meet you in real life first, which I'm, I'm sure we will soon because yeah. um you have um your play coming out again um you revived yeah. this play um happy mm. birthday sanita and it's uh it's touring all over the uk isn't it so just tell tell us it a little is. bit about it um well we did it almost 10 years ago so it mm. was a great chance to revisit um we've extended it uh i've rewritten it not all of it, but, you know, there were always bits that you can improve from last time. I've uh, made it into a two-act play, and it gives you a bit of space to explore the characters a bit more, work out what it is that really the characters are about, um, and also update it because of COVID and Brexit and has implications yeah. on everybody's life. Um, so it's been great. It's been great to revisit something. Mm. Um, and was it... Uh, what what made you actually think? Oh, you know what? Let let's do this again because I, I remember actually when it came out, and um, I think I was working at BBC Asian Network at the time, and our job was to kind of look for this kind of thing and yeah. you know promote it and and get interviews with people. And um, I remember Shabana Azmi was one of the leads, and which blew my mind. I was like, oh my god, because I, I also write, and you know I had a, yeah. a, a company called Castaway Arts at the time, and it was like oh my god look what Rivko are doing this is amazing Shabana asked me like what first of all what was oh, that me, my, like? me myself I was like oh my god Shabana asked me <laughs> so yes I totally understand what you're saying I blew That's my nice. head and I just went home and I told my mom and dad Shabana is gonna be in my play and I was like oh my god um it was wonderful it was really wonderful to have someone like that it just kind of you know like you said the work we try and do to have someone like that in it just makes you it's also a bit scary because you're like she's so great yeah. like, oh my god what she hates it do you know what I mean it's like there there is all those fears start popping up don't they um but it was great it was great and actually it was Prav's idea to bring it back right we um and you know he just got in touch with me towards the end of last year and said I think we ought to do it again and I'm like oh Okay, but if we do, I think it needs to move on and become relevant hit more so now and not just, let's not just recreate what we did there. Um, so that's how it came about again. And I and I think I'm really enjoying how, replaying with it again, you know. Yeah, oh, that's good. And, and was it kind of, was it difficult to kind of change bits and or was it, you know, a nice challenge to bring it into today's age? Um, it wasn't difficult, you know, because the bits that, you know, deep in your heart, sometimes, you know, when things could have done with a bit more work and stuff, you just didn't. Mm. Uh, so it was actually right, quite exciting to go back to that bit and go, well, I always wanted to have another go at that. Let me do that. Um, and I, and updating it, actually surprisingly comforting, not easy, but relevant. Yeah. Like, no, we have all collectively as humankind been through some stuff. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, and it impacts on us and it's made people think about who you are, what we're doing, why we're doing it. Does it feed us, feed our soul anymore? Mm -hmm. And because of that, lots of people have left what they used to do be before COVID or changed the way they look at life um so yeah actually quite exciting mm. but it, it is like that thing where you step back from something and then it allows you to actually look at what you thought you know you call life you know yeah. from over here and then yeah. you're like hmm. okay you know it's yeah. like you, when you go away for a while right yeah I, I, I think sometimes you know 
like I don't know if you think this, but I, I have talked to a lot of friends before COVID. You were just on this hamster wheel. And you got on with it because you had to, didn't you? There's life, there's family, there's kids, there's work, blah, blah, blah. You just, just did it, you just did it, you just did it. And then we all had to start. Whether you liked it or not, you stop. Most of us. Some people still, you know, worked really hard. But the majority of us couldn't. And that's when you realise, ah, what have I been doing? Yeah. This is not what I wanted my life to be. Um, and maybe it's a wake-up call. Yeah. Isn't it? Um, like for you, um, how long have you been in acting and writing? Long time now because I'm quite old. Um, so, so you're not that old. I, I'm old too. No, no, no. I'm if we're talking about old. I'm old as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm older. Um, so I'm heading towards. I'll be sixty soon. What? And yeah, really? so, wow. yeah, yeah. So and I really? have been. I've been acting a long time. Uh, I started at school. I was really lucky. I'm the most amazing English and drama teacher. And if it hadn't been for the, her, I'm sure I wouldn't really have learned much about it. I wouldn't have known. Uh, I carried on through with at uni, but um, it was only when I went to drama school. And then I, yeah, I think that was when I kind of went, oh, no, I do want to do this properly now. This is not just me going, oh, let me go and do a drama class after school. Uh, let me go and do this. And yeah, committing to it. Yeah. And and, so. and and obviously, you know, you are a little bit older than me. And I know from when I was younger, uh, for me to say, oh, you know, I want to do acting to my parents who mm. wanted me to be an accountant, that mm. would not have gone down well. Did you feel like you had the support? No. <laughs> uh, not, 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 not really. Not straight away. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, they just, they were like, what, what? do you think you're doing um I had a good job as a science teacher oh I yeah it. you know I, I, I enjoyed yeah. it uh, mm -hmm. yeah so I was just like what do you think you're doing and I think they thought I'd like maybe lost my marbles a bit and also oh then for a while they thought oh she'll come out of it let her do it for a bit she'll come out of it um so it took a long time, and I think I'd only be I'd been acting probably about seven eight years, and I did a play. I'd always ask them to come and see my play, and they always said no. But uh, so then after that, I stopped begging for them to come and see a play, and I said I'd always just tell them I'm doing a play. If you want to come, I'd love you to come, and I'll sort out your tickets. Um, I was doing a play about partition. Mm -hmm. and, um, and of course my dad had been through partition and he was a bit intrigued by that so I said um, yeah you know you should come it's really interesting it's based on people's true stories and he came and that's when my mom and dad realized that this is what acting can be too yeah. <laughs> it's not all sex and drugs and rock and roll and I'm like I wish it was it isn't I worked really hard <laughs> to, to, you know yeah. So that's when it started to change for, for them. So that, that power of storytelling really then hit exactly. them. Exactly. And, mm. and do you know what, as well, Rina, it's, it's the power of storytelling of something that is relevant for you. It was yeah. relevant for him. It's storytelling for us, isn't it? Mm. That was his, uh, he, he was only like 9, 10, 11 when he went through partition. But he experienced it and he had memories of it and images in his mind. And we talked about stuff like that on stage. And, of course, he, yeah, it touched him. Mm. So that's when it's storytelling, but it's relevant storytelling. Yeah. no, Which I, I think is what Rifko do really well. They do. And you've worked with Rifko for a long time, haven't you? I've known Prav since about 94. Oh, wow. Oh. He was, uh, was he like five years old then? Was he, he old? was really young. <laughs> um, 94, maybe 95. Um, he was still an actor and I was an actor. Um, yeah. We, the oh, first wow. time we worked together, we were in a show together. Right. <laughs> that is, you know, a, a solid relationship. And, and, and the fact that yeah. you've, you know, you've written so much for them. So, 
uh, derange, did you do deranged marriage? And I didn't write deranged marriage, but I was in deranged okay. marriage. Okay, okay. And uh, then... I wrote Merry Christmas. Yes, I yes. Wrote, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Happy birthday, Snooter, and then you know, Masala Queens and stuff like that. That's amazing. Yeah. So over the years, we have, we, yeah, we've known each other a long time. And great. I mean, you're producing magic, and that that whole like telling our stories of you know South Asian people in this country like that's so mm. important and like I said mm. like when I uh, had a theatre company and yeah. um, uh, that Rifco were still then like the goals and yeah. they still are now like you know yeah. it's the, the way that um, you know Pravish and yourself like how tell those stories and and it's and it's funny and it's entertaining and they're like family yeah. shows it's so nice and you know I'm so proud of Little English so yeah. proud film uh yeah. which is amazing and and uh so Ramit uh was on this podcast actually talking about that and she's also yeah. she was talking about this as well because obviously yeah. she is in happy birthday Sunita as well she is. she's playing my Harleen yes yeah. yes um and have you got one of the the leads from India again haven't you yeah we have we've got Divya Divya Zen Shah and um she's another she's another amazing amazing woman who's um so experienced and her theatre craft is so oh yeah it's such a joy it's such a joy working with wonderful people do you know what I mean they just inspire you Absolutely. the more you work with great people the more they inspire you you go away mm. who was it that inspired you like on your journey from you know writing acting and everything I think I have to say my first, first, first. Although I, I never would have been an actor if if it hadn't been for that English teacher at school. Oh. Yeah, because she, uh, her name was Mrs. Cranage. Um, this is a long time ago, but she used to take us to the theatre once every two or three weeks. We'd all get on a train and go to the National or the Barbican. Or somewhere mm -hmm. in the West End, uh, should arrange it so we'd have a backstage tour, we'd see the show, and then we'd all come home and then get picked up by our parents and taken home. And do you know what? I don't think kids have that nowadays. Um, no, not and, in and, there's, and there's a and it it might not um, kind of have that much of an impact on them because they have they're so overstimulated by other things as well, exactly. like a lot of. And I, you know, you're right. And and of course, at the time, there wasn't great telly in that way, was there? Really, no. we weren't watching amazing box sets of anything or movie. There were movies at the cinema, but yeah, it was just. Uh, and I've always loved reading and the, the spoken word, reading plays. So I think it's that sort of stuff that really inspired me: um, playwrights and, and writing. So, um, what do you prefer, theatre, TV, writing? That's really hard, right, because somebody else asked me that the other day, do you prefer theatre or do you prefer um, film? And I'm like, no, but that's asking to choose your best child, right? You can't, oh, really, okay. you can't really choose. <laughs> They're completely different, and yet it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's something beautiful about being in front of a camera where you don't have, you can do it all with intention and your eyes and what you think and feel. Um, and if you were that subtle on stage, people would just miss it. Yeah. So you, you know, so there's that joy in, in being, being able to go from one to the other. And then actually sometimes when you've been really busy with filming, there's something really nice to just sit at home and write and sometimes not talk to anyone for days because you're just in your own story head. But there, there's certain people I feel like who do this and, and me being one of them, that the way that we make sense of the world uh, or everything that is going on is to sit down and write and that's how you can process things or kind of yeah. get in touch with yourself or how you feel yeah. about stuff and all these stories come pouring out right yeah, you're right yeah yeah you're right I think um maybe some people create music some people paint yes. this yes. is how uh, you get it you know we get it out our, our system is to try and hold a mirror up to what's going on or has gone on or 
asking questions about is it right that that's going on for women there or mm -hmm. why was that happening but nobody questioned that that's not acceptable and all of those sort of you know questions that we still have because mm -hmm. not not a lot of changed I think for women we like you know when I was growing up when I was 13 14 15 I used to think yeah but when I'm old none of these questions will be relevant because women can you know I'll be able to do what I want when I want and it's not really true no I mean in certain ways it, it's regressed a little bit like you know you just have to look at America and you okay. know with their abortion laws and things and you're like what just happened yeah. you know um totally. certain things I think um Gen Z speak out more about and they're more open about and and it and you know they're changing things in a little way like I was just you know I was yeah. speaking to one of my kids um yesterday about um periods and being on your period mm -hmm. and how you know if you're going on this trip and it's a residential trip you might need to say oh I have heavy periods and I got cramps and she's like oh do I and I was like it's nothing to be embarrassed about she's like yeah it's not is it it's nothing to be embarrassed yeah. about you know yeah. and people will and it's a thing like they'll in 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 class I mean when they were talking about this trip they were saying what well, we're on, on on our period and you wouldn't have yeah. I wouldn't have said that in a class full of mixed gender you know mm -hmm. I would never have and, and they're quite vocal about talking about this kind of thing yes. and Good. you know and body positivity and things yeah. like that and yeah you know what I mean self-care yeah. self-love yeah. whereas I definitely that I didn't know what any of that was no no, there was that taboo around it all, really, growing up. But when I, you know, you, you didn't talk about that stuff. You didn't yeah. make sure your, you know, your your dad and your brothers didn't know what that was going on. And you're like, what? I know. Um, I, know. I mean, years later, I said to my mum, but they're gonna get married. They're gonna have, you know, that that. They they have daughters now. I'm like, come on! They've got sisters. They've got a mother. Where? How do you think all this stuff happens? What is this thing that you know you can't talk about certain things? But you're right. I think things like that are changing. I can certainly hear it with my niece and my brother and the way they talk about subjects like that in a very open, yeah. um, natural because it is natural kind of ways it's normal it's natural but I, I do agree in some respects um things are still very uh traditional for women mm -hmm. you know we don't get paid as much as men yeah. you know um a lot of other things like they're still in the head positions yeah. you know when you want to enter an industry you've got to get past all these kind of like high up guys first you know yeah so uh, definitely even in the South, South Asian community it's still quite traditional isn't it I think so. Mm. I um yeah, sadly. I do I'm not saying it hasn't moved on, it has, but um it just saddens me that some people still hold on to values that I think are like 50, 60, 70 years old that are not relevant now, that may be worth I, I do, I'm not gonna say something here now, and I do believe this, that it's a lot of immigrant families like my parents they came over from Africa back in the 60s and stuff they bought certain values with them and they held on to those values because it gave them strength it helped them go through the you know dark times and the hard times because it was hard rebuilding your life here in a country that was not always supporting you and they kind of, I think, made this rose tintedness of what it was like back yeah. in the homeland. And you're like, mm, I don't think so. But at the same time, people, you know, then you go to India and India's all like, boo boo, boo, here we go. Right. And you're like, now that's not the India you told me. Because right? yeah. you might still be in some little bin somewhere where, you know, they beat the shit out of you because you looked at somebody. But I know that happens. Mm. But generally, you know, they're, they're out there doing their thing. And, and I think it's taken a long time for people to accept that. Uh, it's yes. interesting. It's just interesting. And I think I, at the end of the day when I start writing, I never kind of think to myself, oh, I'm going to write about why about women. Boo. But it just 
that's what comes out. And I think what it boils down to is the choices we're allowed to make. And then sometimes you have to kind of grow a pair and make a choice for yourself. Yeah. Because you can, and it ain't easy. And sometimes it's easier than others, but you kind of sometimes have to stand up and say, no, I am, I love you so much. And I know you're saying this because you want to protect me, but I need to do this for me. And I think one of the things about COVID is that maybe some people kind of started to go sit back a bit and go, maybe I can do this. Maybe I want to do this. Why am I? working my socks off or whatever yeah Um, Um, I mean I mean to be to be like a change maker like you said is is quite difficult and to say you know I'm doing this and also for parents to understand and everyone else to understand actually that you know you can be for example a South Asian woman in this country Mm -hmm. and still respect your culture and love your culture and say actually I'm not doing that stuff I'm going to do this and it doesn't mean oh my god we've lost her We've lost her to, um, you know, yeah, lost her to, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, and and she doesn't care about the culture. She's a coconut. She's she's yeah. Still the community. I don't. I feel like mm, it, it doesn't mean that. People find it quite hard to understand because I think people have a, a habit of box putting into people into boxes. Like, oh, yeah. you know, oh, oh, she's married outside the community, right? Mm-hmm. Lost her. She doesn't care about anything. Or, mm-hmm. you know, all oh, right, she's um. She's in the arts. We've lost her, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then, you know, don't you find the really funny sentences that people come out with? They'll go, you like, if you listen to your aunties chatting away, you know, they'll say things like, um, "Oh yeah, yeah, uh, son, son, son's married to a gori, right? She's married to a gori, okay." But you know, then they'll go, "But Bojangia, because she's she's ever so good, and you know what? She's learned a bit of Punjabi, and she really takes care of her. So then it's okay." Right, it took a long time, and I'm just like, for goodness sake. Um, so, so sometimes afterwards, I'll say to my mum, What what was all that about? So and so could have married someone who just turned around and went, I don't want your mother in the house, get rid of her, right? But, and she's been jumpy like you, so what the was all that about? This has got nothing to do with. It's just whether you're a good person or not, isn't it? Surely, well, whether you're, a, you know, from Poland or from Ireland or whatever. So these are the questions that make me, they make me laugh, but at the same time, they annoy me. <laughs> uh, no, it's true. We have to laugh at them because they are quite. Otherwise, you'd like, just be wound up all the time, wouldn't you? you? Be about it. I mean, you know, my my family did it with my husband. Like my dad was like, oh, you know what? He's very Indian, like. I mean, hmm. their culture, their culture is quite like Indians, isn't it? So they're kind of like Indians anyway. And like, it's like, so you know, their okay. culture is, is their culture and it's a good culture and yeah. it doesn't have to be Indians to be good, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It, it, it is, it is funny. Um, but yeah, you know, I love the way that you, you do explore all this kind of thing in your writing. Um, I, I think it's so cool and so needed. Um, yeah. it, what's it like being part of Hollyoaks though because that you know that is a very different thing and it's a kind of whole world in its own right yeah it is it is and I've never been anything a part of like that kind of world before I've never done a soap or anything in that way um yeah it's fun it's fun it's it's non-stop it's constant it's hard work it's filming every day and you know like you learn a play and you think okay Mm -hmm. I've learned that now and now I can just do the play no so you learn it you shoot it and then you're learning the next thing and I'm just sometimes your brain goes I can't learn any more lines um but it's fun and the the rest of the cast are lovely Mm -hmm. the crew is gorgeous so it is actually you just know when you get to that point when you've been on the hamster wheel for a while because it's because it's never ending. The, I can tell when I'm just getting a bit, ooh, and that's when I need a little time yeah. to, to just step back for for you know because you're giving 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 giving. You work from half seven till seven every day, and it's oh, just yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. So oh, most okay. if your storyline is. Uh, one of the key storylines at the time mm. then you're in every day all day um 
So yeah, I've taken a little sabbatical and it gives mm-hmm. me time to yeah. you know, do this and have a break, spend some time with my mom and then I'll go back, you know. Mm. So yeah. And and what's your character like in Hollywood? What's Miss Bar like? Well, do you know what? She's quite fun actually. Sometimes I, I sort of laugh and think she's a bit uh she's a bit like Yoda, but she's <laughs> she's Miss Barbaric and she is a single mom. Well, her kids are all grown up now. Um, so the youngest is like like nineteen or something. Um, so and she's brought up her kids and is on her own. She's a doctor. She's very strong. She's very uh, the family are Muslim. Her their faith is very important to them. Um, but they are liberal, and she wants her children to be good people, strong, kind people. And she's brought them up to that. And she's uh, quite a interfering mum in that she because she loves them and she thinks she knows best and she always has to go afterwards and go I'm sorry I shouldn't have interfered and they're like no you shouldn't have um so yeah that's the sort of you know I don't know quite sure what's going to happen soon because all her children have literally grown up and left Mm -hmm. and there's only one little one left at home there's the other one who is still at, at, at home but she's married and you know like, oh, what's going on? It's, it's, you know, when, when we first started, which was six years ago, they were all quite young. Um, and they literally are my babies. So I'm like, oh, my babies are all growing up. Um, I'm, I mean, how wonderful that there is this representation on Hollyoaks. And it's just it's so really nice. Important. You know, even it's if really you, important. It's so important. Even if you look across at East Enders, you know, Bal mm. Sobal is, is exactly awesome in that. And, and that's the, you know, they get it right with the representation yeah. as well. Yeah. So I, I just, I love to see it. I yeah. really, and, really, and one of the things that was really when we first, when we first got the job and we start talking about getting the job or whatever and talking about creating this character was like, I don't want, this, I don't want to be harping on about, oh, the Muslim family, because you don't harp on about next door going, oh, the Christian family. Mm. It's their faith. It's just there. It's an important part of their life. Just be that. Yeah. You don't keep going on about it. You can see it. Yes. And that's how we live, isn't it, with our neighbours and our friends. I don't go into work and go, ooh, I'm a Sikh. They know I'm a secret. They just know it. And if they don't, somebody one day might go, oh, where are you going? You go, oh, no, no, I'm a Sikh, so actually I don't. And they go, oh, and you have that conversation. You don't discuss it at work every single day, do you? So, I mean, this is what makes it authentic when you're portraying this character, you know. That's the, it's uh, important to do it like that, yeah. I feel. that is more authentic to, 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 you know, that's how we are in real life. Yeah. No, that definitely, yeah. definitely. And I want to just mention another character, which uh, me and my kids are very familiar with, and they're very excited. Oh, yeah. I'm talking to you, Miss Spray. Ah! <laughs> Miss Spray from Class Dismissed. Oh, my it's gosh. Good. What an I absolute know. icon. One of my favourite characters in the whole wide world. I'm going <laughs> to carry her in here until I die. I love, love her. And Miss you know Spray, what? can I just say it in the way? Miss Spray. Right. Oh, yeah. Do you know what the joy about Mr. Nasal and Miss Spray was that a lot of the other characters, there was a lot of talking and stuff to go, oh, well, what about this? What about create, create, right? Yeah. Literally, I turned around and he said something. This is the first day in rehearsal. He, he said, oh, yeah, and I put my teeth out a bit like this and went, oh, Mr. Nasal. And that was it. I had, and I was like, oh, oh, okay. So then they got me teeth and I went, I would need really big glasses. And then, and then it just went from there. And the two of us had the best laugh. I I have to say that Class Dismissed is one of the funniest things on TV. It is, and, 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 you know, I'm saying this, I know I've got kids and I watch it with my kids, but as an adult. Mate, as an adult, me, I would watch. It is one of the funniest, most (laughs) underrated things on yeah. tv so you know anyone who's listening and whether you have kids or not class dismissed bbc iplayer absolutely <laughs> absolutely yeah, I hilarious um I, I i loved it um but in terms of like future projects and your dream yeah. roles like oh. what what can we expect from you and 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 what are your dreams 
that's really hard, right? Because there's loads still to do. So, um, theatre. Um, I do a classic of some sort, you know, because that, like, I don't know, Shakespeare or, oh, I don't know, Ibsen or Chaucer or something. I don't know. Mm. Because, and I don't want to set it in, like, mm, Delhi. I don't want to have a reason to go, oh, you know, I, I just, I'm just bored with that. I don't want to, unless there's some new way of, you know what I mean? I don't want to do the Three Sisters set in Mumbai. So I can do the, you know, the accent. Why? Why can't I just be in Three Sisters, right? Mm. That sort of thing. Um, but do you know what would, like a, like a really silly thing that would make my day is to play the baddie in a Bond movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what? I feel like baddies can be so much fun. What a laugh. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's time for an Indian woman baddie. I think it is. I can see you. And I'd have more henchmen and ladies. Yeah. So, you know, I wouldn't have to do anything. Because that's what you do as a baddie. Okay. But um, I'm right. I'm also writing stuff that I hope, um, I don't know if you like them, but I'm really into thrillers. Yes. Um, you know, thrillers and crime mysteries and stuff. So I am trying to write a crime mystery series. Right. And and and, and it's a very, very, very popular genre, genre now, isn't it? It is popular. I love it. I love it. I've I've always loved it. But it is popular. And it, it, you know, and, and I actually am not sitting there thinking, oh well, let's, you know, it could be a telly series or something. I'm thinking, you know, let me just write my crime book. Because it's something I've always wanted to have a go at. Yeah. So I've started doing that. Uh, there's loads to do. There's loads to do. It. You know what? I absolutely love your energy. And I love that this, this, you have, this is, you need to be doing things like this. And, and, you know, which you are. But there's not everybody who can be like, I want to write this and actually do it. Do you know what I mean? I need yeah. to see this on TV. I need to see this on theatre uh, yeah. theater and actually do it. And there's certain yeah. people that do. You obviously do your brimming and your bubbling with ideas. And yeah. I, you know, we're here for it, Harvey. We're here for Thank it. We're here you. To Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, you know, you've got to try, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. I just yeah. think, well, if I don't try, I could just get, what's the point? No. There's a, yeah. You, you've got a lot to, to give everybody. And um, oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, if I was like, when you, all those years ago, when I was just standing up and saying to mum and dad, um, I'm not actually going to do that. I'm not actually going to get married. I'm not actually going to do this, this, and this that you expect me to. Mm. And uh, no, it's hard. It is hard. And there was, we went through a really quite rocky, horrible time. Mm. Come out the other end of that now, and I'm the golden child. But, oh. um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it wasn't easy. And I'm not sure where that stubbornness came from. But I had to fight for it. And now I'm like, yeah, you fought for it, you come out. And so let's do things. Mm. It, it sounds quite freeing in a way. You carve your own path. Thing. And then it's like, what do I want to do? And you really get it really is, you know? isn't it? Um, and I think that's probably if somebody said to you, what's your mission? I'm like, I don't really have a mission. But the mission is saying to other, to anybody really, but mostly women, be brave to be brave enough to forge your path. We have one life. What are you gonna do? Spend all your time making your parents happy, your husband happy, your in-laws happy, your children happy, and then what? 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 The what? Then yeah, which is stage ball. Stage ball turns around and says no. Yeah, the character in the play who's like. Yes. I'm not even 60. No. Why? Why do I just accept, you know, and put up? Why? Life's too short. 
I absolutely agree. And I've said it before on this podcast and I'll say it again, that as as women, when you kind of free yourself from, oh, you know what, my life's supposed to be education mm-hmm. and then, you know, meet someone, then this and quickly have kids and do this in my career, then take maternity leave and all this thing before I'm like, you know, 40. When you free yourself from that and be like, nobody's, not everybody's life has to follow this path. Let me do my own thing. It's very, it, you feel so empowered and free to actually express who you really are. Totally. Totally. And unless you do it, you don't ever get that feeling. Yeah. You have to take that first step, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I always, I always say to people it's a bit like uh, going on holiday on your own for the first time because people are like, I could possibly never do that. I'm like, well, why not? And nobody says go away for six months on your own. I'm just, although that is rather liberating. But um, even if you did a long weekend yeah, on your own, down the road but you're on your own to do your own thing for you when you want to do it there's a something there's something there's something there that teaches you something have you you've done the six months on your own then have you done that before uh have i i've done six weeks in new york on my own okay how was that fabulous fabulous amazing I, I do. I am meeting more women these days who have done the trip on their own. You know, even if it's yeah. a long weekend or something, and they've yeah. absolutely loved it, and they, yeah. you know, they've kind of grown in that short mm-hmm. space of time. Sometimes, totally. so, so definitely, um, yeah. It's a different. I'm not saying never go away with friends and family. Of course, that's it's a different kind of holiday, and a different experience that you're still going to bring home and have memories, joyous memories of. But something about doing something on your own. So I'm going to Tuscany in a couple of weeks on my own for two weeks. Lovely. Yeah. And now I'm like, I don't, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, I don't know. Wander around Florence for a bit, I'm sure. Look at art. Wander around, sit and have coffee, watch the world I love go by. Yeah. Isn't it? So I'm just like, yeah. So, yeah. It, it sounds um, idyllic. It sounds lovely. And um, I hope you have a lovely time. Thank I'm you. sure you will. And um, thank you so much for coming on here and talking to me. It's been absolutely lovely thank talking you, to you. Um, and I'm really excited about watching Happy Birthday, Sunita. And it's um, it's our uh, eight venue tour, isn't it? It is, which I can't remember all off the top of my head, but it's things like Hornchurch, what obviously opens at Watford, um, Hornchurch, uh, Coventry, Leeds. Yeah, so it go, it does go up north to Leeds. It goes down to Warwick Art Centre, down to Hornchurch in Essex. So, yeah, um, and a few others. <laughs> yeah, Lee, and and so uh, it, like you said, it opens Watford uh, on uh, beginning of May, doesn't it? On the fifth of May is our previews, um, and then then it will be there for a couple of weeks, and then it starts on tour. So, but all the dates and everything is online. All you just have to look up is. Happy birthday, Sunita, tour dates, and they come up. Lovely. And Harvey, are you on social media at all so people can just I am. You? I'm on Instagram as Harvey Verdi One. Um, and I am on Twitter, but I tend to use Instagram. That's it. I am, I'm not on Facebook or anything. Okay. Um, and um, those of you who are listening, thank you so much for listening. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. Um, I'm also on Instagram at Sisterhood of Mommy and Perfect or at Rena D. Annabelle. So please follow me too. This podcast is growing and it's not through a marketing budget at all. It's people uh, telling people about it, sharing it. So please do carry on doing that. Uh, make sure that you have subscribed for sure. Until next week. Peace out, Bernie. Bye. <laughs>